Now, the following assignment is referred to as a photo montage. Now, by definition, a photo montage is when you take multiple parts and pieces of different photos and combine them together in a way that looks realistic and you're creating a completely new image. So this can be as simple as taking a, you know, a person and putting them into an environment, but it can go much, much further than that as well to where you're completely composing an entirely new image based on many separate bits and pieces and parts. So I'm going to do a brief sort of demonstration on one way that you can go about doing that. So I'm going to bring in all of my source material or at least my major parts of the source material for right now which is going to be a, a background and a character. So the baby will be my character. And I'll bring in my background too. So I will extend my uh, my background to fit on the full page. And I'm going to reverse the order of these so that they are in the same environment. You know, I want to see the baby on top of the backdrop. So now I need to get the baby out of out of the background. Um, and I anticipate maybe needing to edit the baby. So I'm going to duplicate and rasterize the duplicate. Remember, we're trying to work non-destructively here. And as a good uh, rule of thumb and a good way for you to perhaps keep your stuff organized, um, I like to keep all of my smart objects in their own group. That way I don't accidentally rasterize one of them when I need to keep it in case something happens and I need to go back to the original. So. I'll call it my smart objects. Okay, and I think I'd like to have my baby maybe facing the water rather than the land. So I'll go to my layer. I'll go to edit, transform, flip so that he goes in the other direction. There we go. Maybe move him over to the beach a little bit more so I can see that the his knees would be in the sand. And I'd like to mask the baby out of the white backdrop. Now, in some cases, every once in a while, sometimes we can adjust the blending mode to perhaps hide some of the white background. Not all of them do a good job. You can see this one's uh, showing parts of the baby. But there's one, I just don't recall which one, that will hide the white and just show the baby. And just show the baby. thought there was at least. All right. Worst case scenario, you can always mask the baby out. So I've got a path. I'm going to use this to pull the baby from his background.
Now, because the diaper sort of blends into the backdrop, I'm going to have to sort of guess at where the diaper ends up being. And in cases like this, you get a little bit of freedom with that sort of thing. Again, just like with the third assignment, I'm being loose. Oops. Being loose with the selections. I'm going to use the refine edge option to touch it up so I don't have to worry about being super exact. I'm going to be general around, um, actually I'll be tight around this hand. This hand I'll be able to be a little more general because you can't see his fingers, so I would either need to recreate his finger if I wanted it to show, or since we're on the beach, I can sort of bury it in the sand and hope that it looks like he's just got his fingers in the sand. That'll happen here too, where I'm cutting his fingers out, but at least if they're included in the mask, I can work with them if I decided I'd like to include them at some point. cutting out the blocks, unless I decide I'd like to include them, but I think I want to exclude the box from this particular image. All right, so I've got a general selection around the baby. I'll go into my paths panel. 
I'll name the path my baby. Make a selection. And then come down here. When you're not adding in an adjustment layer and you're just applying a, you, you want to cut a somebody out of their background or out of their environment, there's an icon down here at the bottom. It looks like a uh, rectangle with a circle in it. And that's what allows you to create a mask. All right, so we need to maybe touch up around the baby a little bit. You can see his little flyaway baby hairs are got some white around it. So this is a great opportunity to refine my mask. There we go. So I'm gonna smooth it out. I'm gonna shift the edge into the negative. This is gonna trim a little bit off the edges. And I'm going to feather just a touch, just a little bit. Much closer. Baby doesn't look like a ghost. If I wanted to refine the edge a little bit less, you know, maybe feather I can always undo, double click on my mask, and do a little bit of feathering here. Density has to do with sort of opacity in relation to the mask, so you probably won't mess with that too much. I think I'd also like to bring the edge in a little bit, so I feathered a tiny bit but I still feel like I need to deal with the edges a little bit more. Smooth it a little bit. Still think I need to shift the edge in a touch. If it's still not quite right, I can shift the edge more. This is also another option where you can always go in and hand touch up parts of the mask that you think need to be edited. So for instance here, I could edit the edge of his oops. Edit the edge of his mask by hand if I decided that the refine edge option just wasn't really doing the trick. Now, you want to have a steady hand for this. It's real easy to accidentally give the baby a lumpy head. So a little goes a long way in this case. Be careful. Don't drastically alter the shape of this little baby body. I'm just touching up here and there where there was too much white showing. Okay. So another thing that you can do in order to kind of help two pictures blend in with one another um, is to maybe make the lighting match. If you look at the lighting on the sand and in the sky, it's very warm. It's at sunset, so you've got a lot of warmth here. And the baby is very fair, but doesn't really look like he's being hit with warm sunset type light. So this would be a really great opportunity to add in a photo filter effect. And what this does is, in, in traditional photography, if you wanted to add a tinted filter, you would actually physically screw like a colored lens onto the camera in order to tint the picture that comes through. Well, in this case, we're doing it digitally. So I'm going to click Photo Filter. And right off the bat, it picks like a warming filter. Now, if I disable and enable this filter, 
you can especially see up here, this isn't affecting just the baby, it's affecting the background as well. You can see the background goes from being blue to kind of a purple color. So I want this to affect only the baby. Well, I could do one of two things. I could load the mask as a selection and apply that mask to the photo filter, or I could do what's called a clipping mask. If I right click on the photo filter and pick create clipping mask, what this does is without having to physically create a mask for the baby itself, I am making a, uh, an additional layer that only affects the layer directly beneath it. So this photo filter is now only affecting the baby and no other part of the image. So now I can play with some of the other filter choices and see if I can get the baby's color to match. I could also, if I wanted to, pick a very specific color to work with. So now I've got given the baby a pink tint, or a blue tint, or a green tint. But we're going to go back to those sunset colors. So at least now he looks a little bit warmer. Density will make it brighter or softer. I think by default it's around 25%. So I might go a little warmer than that, but that's, that's at least in the right direction. He's looking like he's got a little bit more sun to him versus not having it at all. And I know it's a subtle change visually, but it can make a really big difference when doing this type of work. You want to make sure that the lighting and the shadows and everything, all of it needs to match one another. Let's take it a step further. So in the original image, and I'll go ahead and hide the layer mask. In the original image, the baby had a shadow beneath him, but we ended up editing that out once we did the mask on the baby's layer. So we need to recreate that. Now, one way that we can go about doing that is by double clicking on the layer and adding a drop shadow. But that's limited in the amount that this actually looks right. Because if I am making it a little bit darker for you to understand, um, you know, if the sun's up here, if you think all the way back to the first assignment, the shadow should be on the sand kind of beneath him towards the left. But what the drop shadow does is it, it just wants to put a shadow right beneath the baby like the baby's a flat object, like it's a sticker, think, or like a cardboard cutout. And you can see that it's not just on the sand, but it's behind his head on these trees and the mountains and in the water back here. And that doesn't look realistic. This drop shadow is really only good if the baby's against a flat backdrop, not for him to look three-dimensional in like a real scene. So in this instance, the drop shadow isn't the direction that we want to go in because it's not going to at all give you a realistic end result. But there's a workaround. So I have the baby's selection used from the mask here. It's this totally separate layer or separate object in a, in a way. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to go to edit, fill, and I'm going to fill it with black, with my foreground color. Now, right off the bat that looks like, uh oh, what have I done? I'm going to rearrange my layers a little bit because now I've essentially made a shadow layer. So it's separate. Okay, so now what I can do is I can adjust that layer by using free transform 
to act as the baby's shadow. So I'll reposition it, shrink it, maybe use some perspective. adjust the way that it's going to look potentially. And while it's not entirely perfect, you can see that it's a lot closer to what would probably be going on. Oops if it were a real shadow versus what we were doing initially with the drop shadow, right? Then maybe throw some blending modes on it to get it to blend in. Soft light's probably pretty close. Check some other options. Yeah, soft light. There we go. And because it's really sharp, I want it to be softer. So I'm going to go to filter and I'm going to apply a Gaussian blur. So this gives you a preview of what the edge of that shadow looks like. And we're going to soften it. There we go. Not too bad. Another way that we could alter that would be to pick a color and then maybe lower the opacity. Another option, yet again, if we were to duplicate the backdrop, and use a good old burn and dodge, it's another way to do it also. So I could make some adjustments based on what my needs are. If I wanted to go even a step further, you know, maybe the baby needs darker shadows. You know, if the light's really dramatic, perhaps I need to add some darker shadows beneath them. To really emphasize those shadows. Not too bad. Let's go a step further. What's going on in the scene? The baby's got, you know, his hands in the, he's got his hands in the sand, and you're right by the ocean. Let's say, let me get creative here. Let's say he's got something in his hand, and there's something in the water that wants what's in his hand. So instantly, I think Godzilla. Let's find a nice big picture of Godzilla. And I want to pick a high quality photo. So I'm going to go to my search tools and pick a large size and it will filter out the biggest pictures of Godzilla we've got to work with. Now, for montages such as this, I would definitely recommend using a real photo versus like a screenshot of, you know, a movie or um, someone else's illustration. 
So to narrow it down, I'm going to pick Godzilla toy because at least that's going to be like a real picture of like a real figurine or maybe even like type in action figure. That might be a better, better option. So here's the one I pick, think I'm going to use. He's definitely the scariest looking, but doesn't look like a toy as much as he looks like it could potentially be a real thing. Okay, so here's my Godzilla toy. To save time, here we go. Put him a smart object in here. Duplicate. Masterize. Around to the top, top of the pile. To save time, I'm going to go ahead and a clicker method for selecting. Hopefully it gets, you know, I might have to make some corrections because you can see it's picking up his hands. I don't really want that. Yeah, this isn't, uh, isn't being the best selection option. Another way, actually, of making selections another way of making selections that can be a lot easier to control is to select by color range. And what this does is you can select a region and base your selection on what the backdrop is doing. So I'm actually looking at this and clicking based on what I'd like to include and what I wouldn't like to include. And you can see that it's very quickly isolating I have to shift click to do this, by the way. So I'm clicking the large masses that pop up. So I'm clicking all the funky shadows and all the funky highlights. And you can see that I turned fuzziness all the way down because otherwise it's going to try to grab ranges of gray. So once I'm pretty happy, I can get rid of the stuff that's not supposed to be in there. I'll hit OK. And it'll think. and make a fairly accurate selection based on what I pick. Now, right now it's picking just the, uh, the areas that I have selected here, so I'm going to have to make some edits based on what I want my mask to look like. So this does require some, some cleanup after the fact, don't get me wrong, but it's still more accurate than using, you know, say the magic wand tool outright. That's for sure. And I want to include some of these little details like his teeth that it picked, so I'm going to deselect that to make sure that those marching ants aren't moving. Now you can see as I zoom in, this isn't the best quality photo, but I'm going to shrink him and put him in the water so I don't have to worry too much 
about it as long as I'm conscious of, you know, the fact that I can't really blow him up or get any bigger than what he already is. Alright, so I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to get rid of this rock. Because he's going to be in the water. And I'll go ahead and select inverse. I'm reversing the selection that I've made. So just Godzilla selected. I'm going to make a mask. All right. See, so again, you can see that it's not the best mask. But I'll make some corrections. I'm going to shrink him. Put him over here in the water. Don't ask me why the baby's fighting Godzilla. It just sounded funny. Maybe I'll want to touch my mask up a little bit. Smoothing, doing a lot of smoothing, actually helps quite a bit with a lot of this extra stuff that was over here. I can also shift my edge inward a touch. go right off the bat that made some big improvements now I just have to do a tiny bit of touch-up I also want him to look like he's going into the water, so I'm going to maybe a little bit sharper of an edge. Maybe hide his feet, make him look like he's coming out of the water. Alright, now if something's in the water that close, chances are we'd probably have a reflection of some sort, right? Here's where it gets fun again. I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to flip him vertically. So now I've got another Godzilla. And I'm going to kind of place them together a little bit because I'm going to be using this as a ripple effect. I'm also going to shrink him or squish him because of perspective in the water. Now whenever you grab the edges of this I usually say hold down the shift key. In this case you probably don't really need to. I'm going to place that little guy right there. Again, I know he's not really lining up properly. He looks like he's laying down on the ground. That's all right. This is where some filters come into play. I'm going to use a liquid sort of filter. So I'm going to go to distort and we're going to pick ripple. Now this box shows like a preview of what it should look like after a ripple effect has been applied. So I'm going to increase the amount. And you can see that's actually pretty pretty darn close 
to what the water would probably look like. So I'm going to apply that. And you can see now it kind of does look like he should be a ripple. with a couple more effects just to get an idea. Maybe that's not what I want. Maybe apply a wind filter to it as well. What that will do is that will help spread them out a little bit. So that'll help it kind of match how a lot of the water looks vertical this way. So it's like kind of back and forth, right to left. So we're literally just distorting what we've got and then applying it. And then masking it in. I'm going to hide it real fast. I'm going to use my magnetic lasso to make an, a selection of the edge of the beach. We're going to need to edit his mask. And then we can edit out the part where he's supposed to be, or I guess not supposed to be in this case. This is the shadow. Godzilla doesn't match the colors either, so we might want to duplicate our photo filter and give one to Godzilla. Might have to go back in and add another clipping mask to make it match. There we go. It's starting to work out, right? It's getting closer at least. So baby's gonna fight Godzilla. Keep it exciting, right? Maybe the baby has an egg. I'll pretend that this is going to be Godzilla's egg. This is a good opportunity to use Magic Wand because you'll be able to get a nice tight, mostly tight selection around the egg. Oops. Move his edges out quite a bit. Get rid of all that stuff. Mostly. Shrink it a little 
little bit so it'll fit under the little baby's hand. And then I'll rearrange my layers because, of course, the layers have to fit under one another. Maybe the baby found Godzilla's egg, and that's why Godzilla's upset. Now you can see something that I've got going on here. And sometimes this happens, is how the egg has like a, a white pixel border around it. Sometimes, I'm going to update that a little bit. Sometimes when you make a mask around something, what can happen is sometimes the mask isn't quite perfect around the edges. And it might leave a little bit of extra information like a pixel worth of information. That's okay. That's an easy fix. You can just paint it over. But it is something that can become an eyesore. So you do want to be aware of that and make corrections if you see that popping up. Maybe I'll bury a little bit of that egg in the sand by editing the mask. Baby accidentally found the egg that belongs to Godzilla. Now, I could spend hours on this. You know, um, the egg could probably match the uh, the scene as well in terms of the lighting. I would want to duplicate and rasterize my egg. So that I could make sure that my egg maybe had a shadow on it from the baby's hand. But again, we're trying to go for realism here. You know, when you're doing montages like this, you want it to be as realistic as you can get it. You know, that's the whole the whole goal. It's, you don't want it to look photoshopped. Sometimes, depending on you know, if I'm combining people and fictional creatures together, sometimes it's going to happen. But you want it to look as close to real as possible. That's that's the whole purpose. Now in this case, I made a photo filter that could apply to the egg. Another way that I could go about adding that photo filter is I could group Godzilla, the baby, and the egg together and then just add a clipping mask to just that group. And that would also do it. Both are acceptable. Now, you know, like I said, I could spend a lot of time on this. Um, the reflection of Godzilla's bugging me a little bit, so I'd probably spend more time on that, making sure that it matches the water. Um, another way that I could go about editing that would be uh, with a maybe some use of uh, the liquify filter, which I'll go over um, in a separate lecture. But this is a basic, you know, a very simplified, basic way that you can put together images and create a montage, just to give you a, a taste of the direction that the next assignment will kind of go in.